Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, hello and welcome back to the channel, everybody. In today's video, we find ourselves at a uh, eviction hearing in Detroit, Michigan, where we have a landlord and a sovereign citizen tenant going at it. And both parties have made mistakes in this particular case, but it comes down to the fact that somebody in this case didn't exactly do their research. So can you figure out which one it is? I'll give you a hint. Just listen to Yankee Doodle Dandy and pay attention to the feather in his cap and you'll find out which one it is. So let's go ahead and sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Now calling case number 2335-0520, Peter Sarowski versus Jamel Crowell on Helen Street in the city of Detroit. This matter is scheduled for pretrial on a complaint for non-payment of rent. Can I have the parties present for this matter? Please come forward. Both parties? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, good morning, sir. What's your name? Peter Sorowski. Okay. Good morning, Mr. Sorowski. My court clerk tells me that the defendant checked in today. We're going to go find him. The court officer is going to go look for him now. And after many hours of searching, they finally found him. Well, I don't know. Who cares? He's here. So let's get on with the show. Good morning, sir. What is your name? Good morning. My name is Jamel. Okay, thank you. Um, can I have you both raise your right hands? Do you both swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. You can lower your hands. Okay, this is a complaint for non-payment of rent. Um, have the parties spoken? Have you talked to try to resolve this? And, um, before we proceed with the hearing here, I'd like to establish that the actual the contract is actually under California law. The 36th District Court does not have jurisdiction over said contract. And furthermore, the plaintiff here has not a D on file and has not have proof that he has not been compliant with laws and mission to actually own his own Well, dude, if the property is in Detroit, then Detroit uh, court system does have jurisdiction over it. I mean, it is in the physical location of Detroit, Michigan, so uh, that argument really won't hold up in court, as you will soon see. <laughs> Who told you that the court doesn't have jurisdiction over the contract, sir? No, it's under governing California law. The house is in Detroit. Yeah. Is the house in Detroit? Yeah. Okay. The court has jurisdiction. The contract itself is under California law, so that's true. Okay. Um, Mr. Sorowski, do you have a deed? Yes. Can you give it to the court officer? Thank you. Mr. Sorowski, is there um, some paragraph in the contract that says that this is to be interpreted by California law? No. Mr. Crow, where are you getting this California law from? When you look at the actual contract itself, they'll actually say that the governing law is California. Or the second to last one. I don't even know why that would be in a contract. That doesn't make any sense. I mean, it may say that. Oh, it does. It says this agreement is to be governed under the laws located in the state of California. Why would why would you all agree to that? Typo. <laughs> okay, well, whatever the case. The property is in the city of Detroit, and so the this is the place to file any kind of, um, you know, eviction action. All right. Um, well, now it looks like we have another failed uh, legal scholar on our hands. The guy probably uh, went to the law library and started eating the crayons located there. So it's understandable why he failed so hard on this because no research was done on his part. Mr. Sorowski just presented the court with a deed 
that um, conveys the property commonly known as Helen Street in the city of Detroit to Mr. Sorowski. This was signed on March 5th, 2021. Did you record this, sir? Did you yeah. record this at the Wayne County Register of Deeds? Yes. Okay, this one is not recorded. But do you did you actually take this to the Wayne County Register of Deeds or take a copy to the Wayne County Register yeah, of Deeds? All right, so um, did you live in California at some point? I did, yes. Oh, okay, because there's a lot of California stuff on here, so I was just wondering. All right, so um, how much is owed in rent? Um, 1500 so rent is seven fifty per month. Right. Mr. Crow, what do you have to say in response to that? I have the actual evidence here that showed that he was not in compliance with the actual agreement or the actual or, or even having the property as home or compliance. So the whole concept itself is over. What evidence do you have, sir? Have you showed it to him? Show it to him before you give it to the court officer. Show it to Mr. Sarasky. We're not compliant with which is law. This is the address here. If I'm on the same frame, is this the same address? Right, this report at 211. All right. Just show it to him. I don't need you to examine him. Just show it. Show him the paperwork. Yes. Sir, have you spoken to a defense attorney today, by the way? Thank you. Okay, you want to go pro se then. Well, you know what they say. A man who represents himself in a court of law has a fool for a client. And uh, sovereign citizens are usually the biggest fools of them all. But let's continue on. Sir, do you have, when I say, I'm calling everybody, sir. Mr. Sarosky, do you have a certificate of compliance from the city of Detroit? No. All right, um, Mr. Crawl, why haven't you paid your rent? Why? 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 Did you hear me, sir? Yeah, just take a deep breath and relax. Is there a reason why you haven't been paying the rent? So you think you can just stay in the house without paying rent? I'm sorry? Do you think you can stay in the house without paying rent? Ah, uh, yes. The sovereign citizen silent treatment. Uh, in a lot of cases, that means you accept the contract or you say yes. So he's probably the agreeing with the judge on this, saying that, yeah, he has every right to uh, skip out on his rent. I mean, come on now, judge. He's a sovereign citizen. That's what they do. You know what? I'm going to pass on this matter so Mr. Crow can get himself together. Have a seat, sir. And as a matter of fact, you may want to go speak to a defense attorney. Go to room 417, please. Um, it, would you like to speak to a defense counsel? No, I don't need to. All right. Well, do you have yourself together? Because every time I ask you a question, there's like a, a delayed response. Is everything okay with you, sir? Do you want to proceed now or do you need to get yourself together? Well, actually, I would like to, as long as everything is established that I spoke for before I'm proceeded, I'm good to proceed. Okay, well, you can say what you want to say, sir. I just need to know. So, are you putting the rent in escrow? Many, many minutes later. Did you hear what I said, sir? You know what? I don't have time for this, sir. If you have an issue, you need to step outside and get yourself together. I'm going to recall the matter so Mr. Crow can get himself together. I'll call this 
when we come off of break. Please go into the hallway or sit in the gallery so you can get yourself together, sir. Well, I keep asking you questions and you're not responding to me. I'm trying to move this case forward, but you're not saying anything when I ask you questions. And so that's telling me that something is wrong. Okay. You need to speak up, please, for the court reporter. All right. So, and that's cool. If you need to do that, just tell me, like, when I ask you a question, how much time do you need to, to breathe? Because we've been up here for a while. All right. You know what? I'm going to pass on this matter. Please go to room 417 to speak to a defense attorney. Okay. Mr. Sorowski, I'll recall the matter when we come back. Room 417, sir. I'm sorry. You refuse a defense attorney? Okay. All right. Um, right. I'm passing on the matter anyway. Have a seat, please. Thank you. Many unbearable hours later. All right. I'm recalling it. Recalling case number 23350520, Peter Sorowski versus Jamel Crowell. 5351 Helen Street in the city of Detroit. This is a recall of a complaint for non payment of rent. The matter is um, set for pre trial. Um, sir, can I have your name one more time? Peter Sorowski. Thank you uh, for your patience today, Mr. Sorowski. The court notes that the defendant was present. I just saw him up to maybe about 15 minutes ago. Um, this matter was scheduled for. 9 30 uh the court called the matter maybe about an hour ago i'm not exactly sure um the defendant was present uh the defendant placed his name on the record the defendant also um took an oath to give um truthful testimony and um when the court um gave the defendant an opportunity to refute the plaintiff's statements as to rent that was owed um, the defendant did present a screenshot of, it looks like, the city of Detroit's rental map website, which shows properties that are in compliance or not in compliance with the city of Detroit's uh, rental ordinance, which does require that property be registered and um, that the owner have a certificate of compliance in order to place someone in the property and to collect rent. Um, when I asked Mr. Crowell if he placed the rent in escrow, instead of answering me, he started to breathe deeply and stare at me. Um, and so I asked Mr. Crowell if he needed a moment to, you know, gather himself. You know, sometimes people get nervous or whatever. Um, he kept saying that he did not need a moment, but every time I asked him a question, he would start breathing deeply and stare at me. And so um, I passed on the matter to allow him to gather his thoughts. Uh, I just recall the matter. He is not here. I will state um, that in response to, um, you know, Mr. Crowell's legal defense that the plaintiff is not, um, in compliance with the city's rental ordinance. Um, there's a section of the ordinance that require, oh, I'll just read it. It says, notwithstanding section 8-15-35D of this code and subject to subsections E and F of this section, it shall be unlawful for an owner to allow any unoccupied rental property to be occupied or to collect rent from a tenant for occupancy of a rental property during or for any time in which there is not a valid certificate of compliance for the rental property. Um, it then goes on to say that tenants of an occupied rental property that lacks a certificate of compliance shall pay the rent that would otherwise have been due into an escrow account, which is established by the Buildings Safety Engineering and Environmental Department with a third party financial institution. If the owner of the rental property obtains a certificate of compliance when the, within the first 90 days in which payments are made, into the escrow account, the rent in the escrow account shall be paid to the owner, less the actual administrative fee charged by the third party financial institution. 
Um, and then it says if the owner fails to obtain a certificate of compliance within those first 90 days, the rent in the escrow account shall be paid at the end of those 90 days to the tenants less the actual administrative fee charged by the third party financial institution. Uh, the, the ordinance goes on and on. Um, basically what this is, is there is an obligation, uh, sir, as a landlord upon you to uh, get your property registered and to obtain a certificate of compliance with the city of Detroit. Um, you are not supposed to place anyone in your house until you've done that. And you are not supposed to collect rent from anyone until you've done that. Um, but the ordinance also requires the tenants, um, if they learn that the property lacks the certificate of compliance, the ordinance, as I interpret it, requires the tenants to place the rental amount into um, an escrow account. I do think I asked Mr. Crow if he had done that, and that's when I did not receive a response. Um, and so the court... I wish he was here so that I could uh, question him again. Mr. Sarowski, are you aware of the tenant paying the uh, rental amount into an escrow account? Okay, so I'm going to enter a judgment. Um, so you said the rent was $1,500. How much in court costs? Let me see. I know you probably paid, what, $55 to file this? Only what the bailiff cost me. Oh, um, 55 plus 35. So that takes us to $1,590. So the court is going to enter a default judgment because I did pass on this matter and I don't know where the defendant went. And oh, wait, here he comes. Okay. Sir, can you come step to the podium? You're just in time. Hello again, sir. Can you state your name? Crowell. Okay, Mr. Crowell, you are still under oath. You were sworn before. All right, um, Mr. Crowell, I just went through this whole thing, but I'll go through it again. So you raised the defense as to why you have not paid the rent in the past two months. You stated that um, the property uh, does not have a certificate of compliance, correct? Actually, um, that is part of it. Part of, and also I want to as well um, established that Pegasus District Court does not have subject matter jurisdiction. Also that I have been, I have been scammed. I am also in the court and the rest. And I want to also make sure that it's stated in the record. Were you finished? Okay. So because there is no subject matter jurisdiction that is established, I do not apply. And I'm not ready to give my rights as well. Okay, well. Um, that is your assertion. Uh, the court does have jurisdiction, though. Um, this court has jurisdiction over property that is located within the city of Detroit. Um, do you live in the city of Detroit, sir? That's a yes or no question. Do you live in the city of Detroit? Okay, I, um, I'm working with you because I understand, you know, sometimes people get nervous or excited or whatever, and they have to take deep breaths. I encourage my children to do it all the time, but I need some kind of indication from you that you're going to respond to my questions. If not, I'm just going to proceed as you being non-responsive. So do you live in the city of Detroit? I would also like to assert that uh, Michigan court rules are now being followed at this moment. In the record, I would like to establish that. Okay, so you're not going to respond to my questions. I'll note that, that you're not responsive. Um, but the sum is... So the sum is incomplete indicate that the property is located within the city of Detroit, and so does the rental map that you submitted to the court. Okay. 
I guess the evidence that is for that will also establish here as far as the contract that this is that this whole case is established under under California law. Sir, you were living in the house and rent is old. Whether the contract says it's California law or um, Michigan law or whatever, you you are in Michigan. The house is in Michigan. The house is in Detroit. You've been living in the house. You owe rent. Now, I am aware of your defense that the property is not um, in compliance. And as I stated before, I'll read to you what I just read on the record before you came back into the courtroom. I think I asked you if you were placing the rent into escrow. I need to know, have you been placing the rent into escrow? I have been scammed. So that is why rent has not been paid. How were you scammed, sir? Because the rental agreement is from another state and the state in which the rental agreement is actually exercised and is different than the state of the governing law. That's not germane here. I mean, um, you're under contract. You are under contract to pay rent. And so I guess I should ask you, what? how would you like to see this case be resolved? Or the case, I demand the case be dismissed. Based on the fact that you entered into a contract that is, you're saying is to be interpreted under California law? Is that why? Well, dude, uh, it may have been accidentally put under a California law contract, but the jurisdiction still lies within the boundaries of Detroit, Michigan. So you're still kind of behind the eight ball on this one. You're not going to get anywhere on it. The 36th District Court does not have jurisdiction over property that is located in the city of Detroit. And the property is located in the city of Detroit. And so you are living in this man's house, but you don't want to pay rent is what I'm gathering. Are you planning on moving out of the house? Okay, well, like I said before, so um, I just read section um, 8-15-82 of um, the Detroit City Code. And this is the portion of the ordinance that deals with registration of rental property. And I'm going to read you exactly what it says word for word. Uh, this is section 8-15-82 subsection D. It says, notwithstanding section 8-15-35D of this code and subject to subsections E and F of this section, it shall be unlawful for an owner to allow any unoccupied rental property to be occupied or to collect rent from a tenant for occupancy of a rental property during or for any time in which there is not valid certificate of compliance for the rental property. Tenants of an occupied rental property that lacks a certificate of compliance shall pay the rent that would otherwise have been due into an escrow account, which is established by the Building Safety Engineering and Environmental Department with a third party financial institution. If the owner of the rental property obtains a certificate of compliance within the first 90 days in which payments are made into the escrow account, the rent in the escrow account shall be paid to the owner, less the actual administrative fee charged by the third party financial institution. If the owner fails to obtain a certificate of compliance within those first 90 days, the rent in the escrow account shall be paid at the end of those 90 days to the tenant, less the actual administrative fee charged by the third party financial institution. So uh, it says thereafter the tenant shall continue paying rent into the escrow account until the owner obtains a certificate of compliance. And this goes on and on and on. You can look up the ordinance on the website if you like. Um, but basically what that means is, sir, although the plaintiff is under an obligation to 
obtain a certificate of compliance, you are also under an obligation. If he doesn't have the certificate of compliance, you are under an obligation to pay the amount of rent into the city's VC escrow. And that is why I asked you if you have been paying into the city's VC escrow. And even on this evidence that you submitted to the court, which is a screenshot of the rental map from the city of Detroit's, um, I guess it's their, um, yeah, it's their rental map. Um, it shows the compliance status. It does show that this property located at on Helen Street is not in compliance, but there is a section. It, sh it shows that you could apply for rental escrow program. Have you done that, sir? That's just a yes or no. Yeah, I'm going to interpret your silence as uh, no in this case, that you didn't do anything with the escrow account. So you're still kind of screwed right here, dude. So you might want to think about which moving service you're going to use to get all your stuff out of there with. And uh, how are you going to pay for it as well? Okay, again, I'm giving you an opportunity to get yourself together. But I'm taking that as non-responsive. Um, you haven't presented any evidence that you have paid into the escrow amount. And so, you know, your defense, in order to assert this defense, there's something, there's a condition uh, which you have to uh, combine, uh, abide by. And I don't see any evidence or haven't heard any evidence that you have abided by uh, the condition that is set forth by the um Detroit Rental Registration Ordinance. Therefore, I am going to issue a judgment. Um, sir, how long do you need to get out of the property? Either pay the $1,590 or uh, vacate the property. $750 per month. And he said you're two months behind, sir. You're right. Do you have do you have a ledger, Mr. Sorowski? No, the uh electronic trail. Do you have your screenshots from your payments, sir? Is it possible that someone didn't do something? I think the owners would be on I was at, I was actually speaking to Mr. Crowell. I was looking at him. You were looking down, but do you have um, your receipts for your payment? I don't think it's necessary. I think you can see to the assertion. Um, in fact, the, the contract is eight hundred dollars, but I know a verbal agreement was seven hundred. We said that earlier. That it's all, it's all good. Seven. So my question is. OK, so I guess I didn't understand everything that he said or I didn't hear maybe a part of what he said. Is it seven hundred per month as opposed to the seven fifty? Uh, yeah. All right. Is the seven hundred. What is old? Is it one month or two months? OK, I'm sorry. That's what I thought I heard. I thought he meant he only owed one month. OK, so it's for seven hundred. So then that takes the balance. Um, so it will be fourteen hundred dollars. That's for two months of rent plus $55 in court costs and $35 for the bailiff fee. That takes this to $1,490. That's on you, sir. So this is what I'm going to tell you. Um, I'm going to give you a certain amount of time to either pay the amount or get out of the house. Okay. Um, now I'm asking you before I enter the judgment, how much time do you need to get that money or move out? Okay, you said you weren't complying. I'll give you 21 days, sir. Your Honor, my yes. Uh, the property questions are duplex, and the tenant and the other unit that is first uh, here for the safety of the, the tenant depending here. Apparently, 
So, uh, just for the record, there's a summons to complain for non-payment of rent in the file, as well as a demand for possession for non-payment of rent that was issued to Mr. Crowell at on Helen Street on June 3rd, 2023, by electronic service to the person in possession who consented in writing to such service at an email address that I'm not going to place on the record. Uh, there's also... Did you get, you didn't give him consent for that? Did he uh, uh, give you consent to serve him with the demand for possession by email? Sorry. Yeah, Do you have that? I need to see it. What? Right. I do not have it in writing. The closest I have is, hey, bro. Just a heads up, I sent you that thing. Thanks, man. That meets the requirements of consent. That thing? Uh, Wait, we're back on the record. I'm sorry. Yeah. You you caught all that? Yeah. Okay, thank you, Madam Court Reporter. Oh, my goodness gracious. You sent it by email, though. Yes. When did you mail it, sir? Memory serves around the third or fourth. Did you receive it in the mail, sir? Okay, I'm, I'm finding that the notice was sufficient. Um, so, um, there's a lease agreement in the file. I, I note that, uh, I note defendant assertion that the lease agreement does not apply to this situation because it is under California law. There is something here in the um, in the uh, lease agreement that talks about California law. There are several references uh, in the lease agreement to California law. Um, this is a court of Michigan. This is a, this um, this is the 36th district court for the state of Michigan. So we interpret Michigan law here. However, there is a tenancy that was created. Um, the defendant does not object or deny that he lives at the home and that I think he said that the rent was supposed to be $700 a month. So, all right, sir. And I, I note that. And I ask you to give me you know, tell me how you were scammed. And I think you just said because the the, the contract said something about California law. Well, the contract is under California law. I was under the interpretation that the contract was under Michigan law and that he would be compliant with all Michigan law in actually, you know, renting the tenancy to me. Right. And he's not in compliance with Michigan law when it comes to the certificate of compliance. But the city ordinance also requires you to do some things. And I've asked you several times if you paid rent into escrow and you're not responding. And um, the plaintiff has indicated that he, you did not tell him that you were paying rent into escrow. And so for you to assert this defense, you there are some um, conditions that you must ab abide by as well in order to uh, assert that defense. And so I am issuing the judgment. Um, I'm going to um, do a judgment by hearing. Sir, you have 10 days to either pay the $1,490 or vacate the premises. If you do not either pay $1,490 or move out, 
by August 4th, 2023, the plaintiff can come to court and ask for an eviction writ. Once the court signs off on the eviction writ, that gives the plaintiff the authority to send a bailiff out to the property with the dumpster to set your personal belongings into the street. Oh, but baby. In order to avoid that, you need to pay the amount stated on the record, the $1,490, or move by August 4th. That is the judgment of this court. So you have until August 4th to appeal this judgment. Do you have a judgment, a proposed judgment, Mr. Sarowski? No, I'm not there. I didn't hear the last part. Oh, I'm not there. Oh, no. I said, do you have a proposed judgment? Do you have the actual document? That, because I issued the judgment, but you have to bring me the judgment to sign off on. Oh, no. Okay, so you can get that from the second floor. If you can go get it and come bring it back within the next at least 15 minutes, then I will sign off on it today. Sir, you can either wait on Mr. Sarowski to bring the judgment back for me to sign off on it, or you can receive it in the mail. That's the judgment yeah. of the court. You have 10 days to appeal. That concludes this matter. Thank you. Yeah, you sure can. Well, I wanted to put it in the file. You don't want it to be in the court file? All right. Well, I only have one copy. I'll give it back to you if that's what you're requesting. Okay. Have a good day. Thank you. Six eight nine nine two. And that's it, folks. I mean, that's why how it goes down if you don't know what the hell you're doing. And uh well the sovereign citizen knew even less than the landlord himself, and the landlord made a few mistakes along the way, so both parties had a lot of fault on fault going on around here. Uh but luckily, uh somebody won it and it wasn't the sovereign citizen. And in fact, the sovereign citizen kind of talked himself into a bit of a bind. Or should I say, well, he didn't talk most of the time. He just was non-compliant, silent, and everything like that. And it really cost him. But that's his own problem. Now he has to go find himself a place to live. At any rate, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. And I will see you on the next one.